with my comfort blanket, but I'm des I decided, when I was sitting down there, I want to talk off the cuff on some of my passions, and um, if I've got time, I might read a poem, because that's what I do. Um, my two passions, I'm not sure if passion's the right word, interest, but things that I'm really concerned with at the moment are two things. One, well, they're both interlinked. One is mental health, and the second one is loneliness. Um, talk about loneliness first. I've been involved in a project with Bristol University about loneliness, and we've been researching and looking for lonely people, because we know that loneliness, I'll give you a fact, loneliness is a bigger killer than diabetes and cancer. Did you know that? Loneliness when it becomes to the stage where it affects your mental health. Everybody gets lonely. Just out of interest, do people, are people aware of that? That loneliness is a big killer. And it's not just amongst older people, because our research was in the, I don't know, 50 plus bracket. Everybody gets lonely, that's fine. And that's a sort of universal thing. But loneliness, when it continues, for people who are in high-rise flats and don't get out of the house because maybe they infirm and so forth, their families moved away, that becomes serious. And we're in this research project trying to reach others and um, trying to reach those sort of people and help them by what we're trying to create. And we have created, um, or we are going to create, what we call Tech for Talk tech cafes and the idea of that is to have in cafes places where with laptops ipads and facilities for older people many who can't use technology don't know how to use it to go there and with the younger people it's intergenerational come to help these older people learn technology now immediately say, well, what about if they don't want to learn it? They don't have to. The idea is to get them out of their abodes and get them socialising and conversing with others. That's the project. Hopefully, <coughs> it's only in BS3, but we want to get cafes set around. The big task is to get those people who are so lonely that they can't get out, that we can take the cafes into their places. You know, I'm thinking of the high-rise flats. So there is a little bit of a rider to all this. This project has lasted over a year. We've researched it, we interviewed people, we transcribed it. What I'm proudest about for myself was that some of us masquerade as artists and we did a performance. Um, we had a writer in who made these scripts which were um, obviously with names but confidential. We didn't use people's names. We dramatise them for effect to put on a performance at the tobacco factory and it was one of my proudest moments if not my proudest moment we put up this performance based on their on their scripts which had been tarted up a bit made with dramatic effect more usable for the audience usable is not the right word but I'm a bit nervous so I can't think of a better word um, made it more reachable that's not very good either, but uh, accessible. Thank you, thank you. My mind, as I get older, works slower um, to the audience, and it's had a very good response. But that was the icing on the cake. We're really after trying to help lonely people, um, older lonely people. But I think all people need to, who, who feel lonely in a chronic way need to be helped, and. Um, we're hoping to do out of this, the outcome is that we're hoping to do a radio play about this based on these monologues, which hopefully will go out on Radio Bristol. We're in the, in the process. So that's the loneliness bit. The other bit is, which is connected, I'm involved in a mental health charity called Changes. Anyone heard of it? No. Well, you have now. Because mm -hmm. uh, Changes is a mental health support group and of all ages, from 18 plus, where people who are struggling with their mental health, and here's another fact for you, one in four people at any one time will suffer with their mental health, one in four. So what's the population of this country? Something like 60 million, 
15 million people are struggling at any one time with their mental health. Now, our group, and we have different groups, I recommend you to research on Google, just look up Changes Bristol, you'll find it all about us. Our group is there, we can't cure people, we're not experts, but what we do is lend support. People come to us and it's free and it's confidential, they don't, what's said there stays in there and we don't chase people up, if they disappear, then they disappear. But what I've found, and I facilitate, because <laughs> I'm older, um, the, uh, we have two over 55 groups, and I facilitate one of the groups. And what I find, having done it for quite a long time in changes facilitating, is that I, feel, I find myself very humble because hearing other people's stories, some are tragic, some are not so tragic, some are funny, you know, it depends where people are. But the one thing that comes through for me is that a lot of people recognise as well, you're not alone. Everyone's different, everyone's unique. They have their own issues, but people know what struggling is to suffer. And that I find very humbling. And it does help people because they know they've got a place where they've got a voice, where they can <coughs> share their emotions, what's on their mind. Maybe they don't want to share, they just want to come there. We don't force people to speak. But we do ask people <coughs> to, somebody else mentioned it earlier, it's about tasks. We set goals and we try and get them to set a positive goal. And I'm sure you've all heard of SMART goals. Do it in stages. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and Time. tangible. Time, what? Time-bound. Time-bound, there you go, yeah, or tangible. <coughs> anyway, it's no good sort of going for the big one, say, I want to lose 10, 10, st 10, st 10 pounds in a week. Let's go smaller steps, how are you going to do it, you know, eat one less meal a day or something like that, you know. Break it down, make it simple. How's my time going? Time-bound. My God, and I haven't read a poem. Yeah. Fantastic. Anyway, anyway, just to wind up, um, that is my... Um, journey with well-being it's meant to be positive and I could say a lot more just briefly to say um, my journey has been through this changes group I have found a very important ingredient in my life creativity I never used to write I write poetry I perform it I, I perform on stage and I'm also learnt learnt's not the right word I've let me say it again I have started to paint never painted before i've exhibited and i don't consider myself an artist who knows i can't paint some scenes but i can paint abstract and so forth i've actually sold so that's my journey creativity it's wonderful thank you